still wiping away the tears a little bit from my eyes. This is News 4 at 6. Now, if they gave, like, an award for the best finish in an upset performance in the NCAAs, Valparaiso would be stepping to the podium right now. Bryce Drew's three-point buzzer beater versus Mississippi yesterday made Valparaiso the Cinderella story of the tournament so far. Valpo is a basketball team trying to keep alive a Cinderella story. Live from the United Paramount Studios in Los Angeles. Ole Miss chokes on the throws, and out comes the Valpo hook and ladder. Through for the win! Good! Oh! Bryce did it! Uh, anytime you have a feeling like that and you uh, get a victory like that, you only uh, you want more and more. It's kind of like it takes the dessert. Once you have one bite, you, you want the whole piece. 32 seconds left in the OT. For the Bryce shot. Drew misses, but Tony no. Vilshinskis the gets the rebound. Vilshinskis and the puts hoop, it home. And Valpo goes up 81-70. Florida State now down four with 17 seconds left. Terrell Baker misses the three. The rebound stripped away by Bryce Drew. Valpo headed to the Sweet 16, though, with the 83-77 overtime victory. Let the madness continue. Tonight, through the use of the sports machine, check your office pool. Bet you didn't have Valparaiso in your final 16. The Crusaders on a crusade to the Sweet 16 after shocking the nose. The Valparaiso Crusaders are happy to be there, still alive, after beating Ole Miss and then Florida State. The best story of this tournament has been little Valparaiso from Indiana. Never won a tournament game. This really has turned into Hoosiers. This has, this has captured the fancy of the whole country. Words that I'm sure you never thought would go in the same sentence. Valparaiso, Sweet 16. And let the mayhem ensue. This is probably the exciting thing in the last decade in the NCAA. Are you kidding? As this magical miracle team continues his trek. Can you say Espy? How can you not dig Valpo? Unbelievable. Valpo has indeed arrived. So who had Valparaiso and Rhode Island? Valpo isn't lacking in the confidence department. All time Cinderella stories. Glass slippers fit nicely, thank you. Yeah, the hook and ladder, swing and gate, Hail Mary, whatever. People have got Valpo fever right now. <laughs> <laughs> it really is a great story. Yeah. It's almost like the movie The Hoosiers all over again. They're the new pride of Indiana. It's going to be at a fever pitch, the excitement by tomorrow night. First of all, we were totally unprepared for the amount of response that we received on that Monday morning after the fellows had won the two games in, in uh, Oklahoma City. Because we weren't expected to win, uh, we were clearly the underdogs, uh, we uh, uh, the darling, as it were, of a lot of people. That was the big story that was going on, the fact that Valparaiso was emulating the movie Hoosiers in real life. You couldn't write a better script. John Grisham couldn't have written a better script, you know, and then to have him hit it. Before the team even returned from Oklahoma City, uh, campus was just swarming with media from all over the country. Truly media on campus from coast to coast. All of a sudden we were in, in, in the national limelight. And the fascinating thing was that we didn't discover this until later, but not only did we capture America's heart, but the shot truly was heard around the world. I had faxes and telephone calls from Japan, Hong Kong, Peru, and South America. The phone's ringing off the hook, and it was just the same questions over and over and over, but it was nuts. I mean, it was absolutely crazy. You and Valparaiso University Athletics, may I help you? Now that Valparaiso's Crusaders are headed to St. Louis and the Sweet 16, the phones at the school's office have gotten quite a workout. It's, it hasn't stopped. <laughs> <laughs> it just, you, know, you pick it up and answer it, and you put it down, it rings again. There were trucks all around. There were satellite dishes around. People were roaming through the ark. Newspaper, television, radio, whomever. I, the place was just crawling with media. When we came into O'Hare, we had TV crews, camera crews meeting us at O'Hare when we landed. The Valpo basketball team, still on a high, came through O'Hare on their way back home this morning. Led by the dynamic duo of Homer Drew and Boy Wonder Bryce. We're kind of just like living the dream right now. I mean, you grow up seeing us on TV, you want to be a part of it so bad. And uh, we're just enjoying every minute of it. I've gotten emails from uh, alumni in Germany, 
all the way to uh, Seattle. What can I do? What can I do? How can I get involved? It's been just a, a wonderful feeling, and I, I just told our players just to enjoy this magical moment. What probably surprised us was the fact that we got such great coverage from, from media all across the country, uh, particularly in that week between Oklahoma City and St. Louis. Uh, and in fact, on Monday, before the team even returned from Oklahoma City, campus was just swarming with media from all over the country. That was the first time that it really dawned on us that, that wow, this is kind of exciting. As we drove around to Union Street after landing at O'Hare and enjoying that moment, we were told, you know, there's a group of, of people waiting for you at the Ark. To turn the corner and see that mass of people and the enthusiasm, you could hear them from about a quarter mile down the, down the road. Uh, the bus couldn't even get to the gym because the whole street was filled with, with fans from the community. You saw the satellite trucks in front and behind the, the ARC. We came up, we, had, we saw people in trees that were taking pictures on top of the ark. Let's just keep going up to the gym. Just keep going up to the gym. There are TV cameras on the roof of the ark shooting down at you. It was just a scene that will never be repeated again because it was the, it was the first time, even if it happens again. This was the first time. It is a sweet time, as you can hear, to be a Valparaiso fan. The Crusaders on their way to the NCAA Sweet 16 for the first time ever. It's history in the making. Stop, we knew Valpo could do it, and they pulled through. And Coach Homer Drew, a native of Webster Groves, returned to Valparaiso as a conquering hero. But today, everybody is a Valpo fan. It is the campus of just over 3,400 students, and nearly half of them are on hand for the team's homecoming. It is a school where the basketball coach is being pushed for president of the U.S. Final bus! Final bus! Final bus! If they make the final uh, we should all do the news from Valparaiso. That... Then, we were ushered up to Jim Watt. We walked in, the place was packed. Wow, all of this, you know. I'm not sure what is more impressive. These guys winning two games or seeing all of you out here welcoming us back. We've been telling each other that it's not time for Cinderella to go home yet. I just want to say, wow. I mean, I thought crazy. I, I thought the fans of Lithuania were crazy, but this is, this is unbelievable. Thanks a lot, guys. Uh, this is what it's all about. It's about a small school that has dreams. It's about a small school winning two games in the Sweet 16. It's about coming home, sharing it with their school. It's about going to Sweet 16, having a chance to win two games to go to the Final Four. <laughs> Just who are these giant killers? And how do you say the name? Is it Valparaiso or Valparaiso? Little Valparaiso. Is it pronounced Valparaiso? Little old Valparaiso. Uh, Valparaiso. Bet you didn't have Valparaiso in your final 16. Or is it Valparaiso? Is it Valparaiso? We've had the great stories like Valparaiso. And... Oh, that's Valparaiso chili. Some call it just Valpo. That's what they have in their jerseys. It's just Valpo. Valpo, Valpo. It's no longer Valparaiso, it's Valparaiso. We have to apologize to all of them, but I want to say, going into this program today, I said, all right, how is it that we say Valparaiso? Right, and, and I was And no the help. men in my ear, let me just say again, the men in my ear in the control room said, Valparaiso, that's how you say that. Yes, and I but said, they, you know... But, but these are the same men who you know. will never ask for directions when on a road trip. Right, but they said it could be Valparaiso, it could be Valparaiso. No, 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 they did you. not. They said, Valparaiso, Lisa, it's Valparaiso. And it wasn't. We are sorry. <laughs> Valparaiso, Indiana. Valparaiso, Indiana. A small town only about 55 miles from Chicago. This big shot has made a big impact in the small community in northern Indiana. Everywhere you look here in Valparaiso, there are signs of support for the Sweet 16-bound Crusaders. The Chamber of Commerce says these signs are turning into dollar signs for the town of 30,000 and that there's not enough money to buy this kind of name recognition. I've got job interviews I got to go to and every one of those employers heard of Valparaiso now. Oh, Valpo. Dr. Steinbrecher was uh, out of town at a conference and had on a t-shirt and a guy jumped, whoa, Valpo, yeah, that's Valpo. And you know, Valpo is a school of 3,500 yeah. and there are 44 alumni in this area. Really? And right now they're all at Ponte Vedra at a sports bar watching Valpo. There were people coming up uh, looking for Valpo t-shirts. <laughs> people were actually offering money to buy shirts from us, but uh, nobody did that though. 
make a note of that. <laughs> we had never experienced before this whole merchandising thing. Who, who had never heard of our school before, let alone all of our alumni, who were calling or emailing or faxing saying, please send me something that says Valpo on it. The hottest item in town is a team t-shirt. Shirt store manager Dave Parker says this is his third order so far. Actually, I've had uh, people stop in on business calls um, from California, and I had uh, just a couple days ago a, a woman from Texas order like $100 of the shirts. The demand for Valpo basketball shirts has become so great, the university decided to take orders, not only for people here in Indiana, but from those around the country. And still, they can't keep up. Valpo designer wear very soon. <laughs> people frequently assume that because of our success in the Sweet 16 tournament, that we will have a, a, a large increase in enrollment. And we don't think that that's necessarily going to happen, but we do know some things. We have seen a significant increase in the number of students who are next year's seniors in high school in front of our desks or our tables at college fairs. And that began immediately after the tournament. Now it would be even more uh, beneficial if the reason why they're contacting us is not because we want some basketball games, but because they got a sense of what this place was about and that the stories that held us up for the fine quality institution that we are educationally, if that's what's causing them to respond, then of course our chances are a whole lot better than when we recruit them. In Indiana, basketball is practically a religion and the Crusaders of Valparaiso University are leading their followers to the promised land. Valparaiso, Indiana, a city of 25,000, is an hour drive from Chicago. Its claim to fame, the home of Orville Redenbacher Popcorn. Hello, I'm Orville Redenbacher from Valparaiso, Indiana. Until now. Growing up, Bryce practiced here in the family's backyard. He loved it so much that even in the dead of winter, he and his brother and sister would shovel the snow off the court and take off their gloves just to shoot around. It was the lessons he learned here and perhaps mom's cooking that convinced him to stay at home. There's a lot to family loyalty and a lot to family closeness, but uh, there's also a lot of fun in this family, and we really enjoy each other. And uh, they've gone at it with competition and fun and games since, you know, the kids were very, very small. Smack dab in the middle of the chaos are twins from Milwaukee, members of the school's most successful basketball team in history. Hang around Bill and Bob Jenkins long enough, and you'll see how tight they really are. The Nicolay High graduates are key players on what's being called a dream team. It's a dream for folks like 1949 graduate Pat Martin. Dreams do come true. <laughs> Maybe their best dream is experiencing this current joy together. What can be better than sharing one of your greatest times in your lives with someone that you care for so much? It's been almost impossible to monitor the impact that this has had. We did use some outside sources to try and help us in that process. Uh, that resulted in accumulation of more than 12,000 newspaper clippings, not only from the United States, but from throughout the world. We collected some videotape of telecasts, uh, newscasts, devoted uh, in many cases uh, significantly to Valparaiso University. And I'm fighting off sleep to, to stay awake and watch some ESPN. And then it'll hit me and then the tears will start to come down because it's just truly amazing and, and it's blessed. But I like to think a little bit about the Valpo for here for some reason. <laughs> you know, I'm all into Valpo, first of all, because it's not far from where I grew up. Just to have all the support and, and, and everyone pulling for you and ESPN at your, at your doorstep out in front of the gym and it's just a wonderful feeling. Well, they're calling it Hoosiers 2 with only 3,500 students. Parazo Crusaders are headed to the Sweet 16. I couldn't even see you guys that much. I just knew where you were going to be. 0.5 left. I just jumped. I caught it. I turned you right there. <laughs> it's like long pass. Bill Jenkins. Like I saw your eyes. They looked at me. You threw it to me. And uh, I just shot it like, uh, like we practiced. Bruce for the win! <laughs> it doesn't matter if you're from a large city or a small place like this. There's always hope for you. Well, yeah, there's been a lot of crazy things happening, but I got a call yesterday from a, from a guy I hadn't seen in like seven years. This is my cousin, and uh, he lives in L.A., and he said uh, we've been on the papers out there in L.A., and uh, he was telling all his friends, yeah, that's my cousin Jamie on the screen, so it was really nice to hear from him. The one thing I hear more than anything else when I'm out and about, hey, 
Anyone can be a broadcaster. It's so easy. So you want to be a sportscaster? My name is Danelle Miller, and here's my call. Well, chance. Stacy inbounds. No prizes on the line. Just a chance to give it a try. Oh, Drew shoots. He scores. Valpo oh, wins. 70-69 over Missouri. Mississippi. Mississippi. What's the difference? They're all from someplace <laughs> in the Midwest. Stacy inbounds it to Drew. To oh, I. <laughs> Perhaps some should keep their day jobs. We had between 800 and 1,000 phone calls, you know, from the time that we beat Mississippi until the whole thing finally ended. I was on the telephone with a radio station in Portland, Oregon, talking to them live. At the same time, other people in the office were talking to reporters from the New York Times uh, who wanted to talk to someone on campus. And there was a call waiting from a radio station in Providence, Rhode Island, also wanting to go live. But first, there is another game, and perhaps another win, as they continue their drive to a championship dream. And the next step for those underdogs from Northwest Indiana is Rhode Island. Valpo will meet them in St. Louis on Friday night. That's at midway today as the Crusaders got ready to make the flight down to St. Louis. And that came after a bus ride from Valparaiso. And I'll give you three guesses what movie they watched on the way over. I think any basketball player, any athlete can connect with that story, especially a basketball player, and especially this team. Uh, there's a lot of uh, lines you can draw between the uh, Hickory team and the Valparaiso team. This is a pretty good basketball team, but now to keep playing at their best, because all of a sudden they've had to start dealing with something that is completely f a thing called media attention. We need to get mentally focused right now with all the media I, I shared with the team. I really want them to enjoy this moment. It is truly a, a magical moment for them. So that's what we're hoping that we can do when we get to St. Louis, get some really quality time alone where we can really concentrate on a game plan and being able to execute that game plan. Good luck getting some time alone. This is Valpo's first ever trip to the Sweet 16. And how appropriate is it that they're playing right here in St. Louis? Well, it's wonderful for me to come home to St. Louis. I grew up in St. Louis. I love St. Louis. But head coach Homer Drew isn't the only member of the family in town. There's his son and assistant coach Scott Drew. And there's his other son, Bryce, who has a lot to do with them all being here in St. Louis. But the family affair doesn't stop at just the Drews. Valpo's other assistant coach is Jim Herrick Jr. Jim Herrick Sr. just happens to coach the University of Rhode Island, who just happens to be playing Valpo tomorrow night. What more could you want? Valpo against Rhode Island. Father against son. Father with son. Son, these are high times at Valparaiso. We talk every night. He calls when I'm in bed last night about 11.30, and you know, the phone rings. I know who it is, because he does that all the time. Hello, we're coming after you. <laughs> It's been a build-up like I've never expected before in my life. Um, you know, he's a great coach. I love him to death. Uh, but it's going to be one of those deals where you know you take your best friend out backyard and it's you and him on the back court and you want to win. It's really a great story. There's so many things that's gone on that's gotten us here, and it's it is just amazing that we're here right now. Now some fans may be disappointed. Number one, Kansas isn't here this week, but reporters, well, let's face it, we've got family connections, the Cinderella story. It doesn't get any better than Rhode Island and Valpo. Cinderella team Valparaiso is in St. Louis getting ready for Rhode Island tomorrow night. The team's unexpected um, success forced the Jenkins twins to cancel a modeling date in Chicago this weekend. Don't think we're in school to, to be models or, you know, we want to be the Doubleman twins or anything like that. It's Valparaiso has been everybody's Cinderella team coming up in this tournament, Dick Ray. And uh, as they've arrived in St. Louis, uh, all the people from the Missouri, Kansas area, have just embraced them because uh, of what they've brought to this tournament. It's really been refreshing to see them here. Homer Drew coming up to the podium and thanking the media for attending the <laughs> press conference. Well, that happens all the time to us in Indiana. <laughs> On the other end of the spectrum, there's Homer Drew who makes all reporters just feel good about life. Very good question. You are correct. Good memory from the past. Good question. A great observation. Good to see you. I think if I don't follow up on that previous question, I get fired. See, Bobby makes you get a little aggressive. Homer just makes you want to grab somebody and hug them. Good point. Yeah, thank you. Nice question. Hey, thank you. 
two possessions. If he makes it, it's three possessions. It's two possessions. They're still in the ball game. There's 50 seconds. Got to shoot from downtown. There it is. That's it. You got to put it up. There you go. They left him out. They had him double teamed and ran away from Bryce Drew. Yeah, they got the first one. There's plenty of time left. Stay with us. While the Crusaders were battling the Rams of Rhode Island at the Kiel Center in St. Louis, their fans back on the Valpo campus in Indiana were going crazy and hoping for another miracle. And Rhode Island is headed to the Elite Eight. The NCAA tournament Cinderella playoff is over, and Rhode Island gets to stay at the ball. The Rams advance to the Elite Eight. Valparaiso's dramatic run comes to an end, but what a run it was. After the Rhode Island game, You've got a seven-footer all the way down to uh, Jared Nunes, our freshman, who's 5'9", 5 5'10". 5 and, there, and there's not a dry eye in our locker room, from coaches to players. And I like that because it meant something. The fans were so excited about the, uh, the game in St. Louis, even though the, the fellows lost the game, they stayed in the, in the stands kept saying, we want the team, we want the team. I can still remember I had a pat on my shoulder, and I turned around and it was one of the uh, security policemen there, and he says, Coach, uh, all your fans are, are standing and applauding and, and wanting you to come back out on the floor. And I said, well, that's really nice of them, but we're, we're kind of subdued in here. And he says, you don't understand, Coach. He says, they're not leaving, and I want to go home. They, they then went out uh, to, to be greeted, and all fans screamed and yelled and clapped some more. And then... We thought, you know, there'd be a couple people out there. I mean, we look up in that whole section, and I don't know, three, 5,000 people, whatever. They're standing, giving our players a standing ovation. Or and then they headed off into the, the media room to be interviewed. And I'm told, I was not there, but I was told by our athletic director, Bill Steinbrenner, that uh, the first question was directed, I believe, at Bill Jenkins. And uh, the, the reporter asked, uh, how did that make you feel? And he said, uh, I'm, as I understand it, that was an emotionally cathartic moment. Okay. That's not the typical response one would expect from a, from a ball player. At which point his brother immediately said, Just a, like a comforting hug that I think all of us needed at that time. And after those two comments, uh, a, another sports writer who was sitting next to Dr. Steinberger leaned over and said, where do you get kids like that? Again, uh, you get kids like that from good families, uh, from, uh, from uh, schools, grade schools and high schools, who have worked hard at, at producing a quality graduate who is maturing appropriately and ready for college, and then you put them into an environment like VU to, to continue to build on what has been there ahead of time. Most people remember where they were when they saw the shot or heard the shot. We had one of our alumnus down the interstate 75 say he got so excited with that last 2.5 seconds, he pulled off the interstate, listened to the game, we made the shot, he got out of the car and jumped up and down, did that Toyota kick right out there on the interstate. It was a fantasy that was being lived out in real life. And there aren't too many things in today's news world from a positive standpoint that lend themselves to uh, living a fantasy. Mr. Speaker, on behalf of the people of Northwest Indiana that I represent, I want to congratulate Valparaiso University, which is in the first congressional district of Indiana. A magical moment for me was watching Valparaiso, Western Michigan, and Detroit move on. Seeing them play against the Goliaths, but getting to the winner's circle with brilliant performances. And who can ever forget that special moment with Homer Drew and Bryce Drew, father and son, with that magical three to go to the winner's circle. You don't always win with the most points. You have attitude. And that's, I think, how we won. I think with our fans being so supportive, I mean, Crusader Club members, season ticket holders, faculty, staff, students, administrative people, our guys realized how much we cared for them, how much we loved them, and how proud we were of the way they carried themselves, of the way they represented not only Valparaiso University, but their families and their towns. And you get a team of, uh guys from all over the country and you know well, actually the world and and blend all the personalities and uh and you got to respect one another but still be yourself and, and and i think that's something that that helps in work or at home and that's something that'll stick with us forever 
television reporters were filing stories talking about the quality of student athlete on the team. They were talking about the values of the institution. They wrote stories for newspapers. And the media really, I think, fell in love with these guys. Once they began to, to take a look at this place, they suddenly recognized that uh, there was much more going on than simply the fact that this group of athletes had won a couple of basketball games in the NCAA tournament. It's a, a terrific university that has a, a, an excellent sports program as opposed to being an excellent sports program that's connected to um, a good university, that we have a certain priority here that's, that's, a, that's education. Well, on Friday night, the curtain dropped on what's turned out to be this year's Shock the World Tour. That's right, Tiny Valparaiso takes a lucky number 13 seed and turns it into some serious skills, not to mention a full dose of adrenaline, everybody's heart's still beating. There's a scene in Hoosiers, and we played that film on our way down to St. Louis, and uh, it was the last game, and, um, and, and Gene Hackman, the coach, said, you know, I love you guys. That was pretty much how our whole coaching staff felt about this team here. And, and that's a major reason this hoop dream captured the imagination of fans all over the nation. More than simply thrills and upsets, Valpo turned the tourney into a round ball love fest. It's just a feeling that it's hard to explain because, I mean, I would die for anyone on my team. That's how strong I feel, and that's how close I think we've grown. Really, everything about the Crusaders was big. Big hearts big pride, not to mention a full dose of blood, sweat, and tears. Oh, Drew nearly banked at home. It's perfect, acceptable to cry because they put so much effort and so much love in one another that, uh, um, that I was very proud of a bunch of grown men crying and just feeling good about their effort. Thanks, Valpo, for a ride we can remember. It's all about the love. Homer Drew is a wake-up call to America. Everything about college athletics, Craig. Homer Drew represents, and so does Valparaiso. I'll tell you, they left us with some nice images. They were very refreshing. There was naivety, enthusiasm, and resolve. It's what college basketball is supposed to be like.